Hi everyone. Like two years ago, after Andrew Shea resigned as leader, some people are now asking me if I plan to go back to the Conservative Party after the departure of Erin O'Toole. The answer is very simple. No, never. It's very ironic that MPs are kicking out their leader because he flip-flopped on key issues, has no firm principles, no clear message, because he pushed the party too far to the left and is only guided by polls. Who could have predicted that a conservative leader would do this? <laughs> well, I did, and that's precisely why I left. I left because that party is morally and intellectually corrupt. It's still the same party, whoever is leader. Don't forget that all those MPs who are defying their leader today because he lacks principles were completely silent for two years regarding the massive violations of our rights and freedoms. They are the same MPs who ran on a socialist program last fall that promised a carbon tax, more spending, and 10 more years of deficits. They are the same MPs who voted unanimously with the Liberals and the other parties yesterday to condemn what they say was anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, anti-Black racism, homophobia, and transphobia during the truckers' rally in Ottawa last weekend. This is complete nonsense. They are afraid to push back against the lies of the media. I won't repeat the mistake that the Reform Party did 20 years ago. Canadians need a real conservative, libertarian, populist alternative, and the only party that offers it is the People's Party. I'm not going anywhere. Stay strong and free. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen across our beautiful country of Canada, our friends south of the border in the United States of America, across the pond in Europe, Portugal, Africa, Middle East, Asia, back to Central America, South America, New Zealand, Australia, China, and Russia. Welcome back to your very favorite angry Canadian on the third day of February 2022. And wow, Maxime Bernier nailed it on the head. And that same thing applies to every political party. We need change. Visible, feelable, feelable that you can see it, you can feel it. We need some populist leader. And we're not going to get it from the current stock of political parties or candidates. The Canadian truckers, you've been reading about it, who are resisting bravely these lawless mandates and doing more to defend American freedom than our own leaders by far. And we want those great Canadian truckers to know that we are with them all the way. They are. They've really shown something. It's time to move on. The snake. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she cried, I'll take you in, and I'll take care of you. Take me in, oh tender woman, take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. She wrapped him up all cozy in a comforter of silk and laid him by her fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night, and soon as she arrived, she found that pretty snake she'd taken in had been fully revived. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed that vicious snake. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I didn't bring you in by now, you truly would have died. 
She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying, thank you, ma'am, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. I saved you, cried the woman, and you've bitten me, but why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. The small fringe minority of people who are on their way to Ottawa or who are uh, holding unacceptable uh, views uh, that they're expressing. Currently, Trudeau is a real snake in Canada, but we don't want to replace Trudeau with another snake. We need real change. Now you're looking at the Swedish flag because we can open up society. Sweden lifts nearly all COVID-19 restrictions saying that COVID-19 no longer a danger to society. Wow, you know, with all the different countries around the world now lifting their uh, restrictions, mandates, passes, it shows that Trudeau stepped into a big pile of turd and he he likes it he's wallowing around in it like a little friggin pig you know it's, think about it he doubles down i'm not gonna meet with those truckers they're racist they're nazi flags they're everything they're criminal element cbc even had a story it's in the beginning of one of my videos that maybe putin and Russia are behind these truckers. What a load of crap. You know, when Canada starts changing and kicking out these has-been political leaders, parties, and members of parliament, we are going to have to clean up the media. Bigly clean it up because they are not helping anything. They are creating more conflict more division. That's how they hope to get their ratings and keep liberal progressive globalists in power heading towards the big, the great reset. I, I keep saying, you know, if Trudeau is bad, look behind him. That little shrimp, Christia Freeland, groomed by the cabal, groomed to be a leader of Canada. Less than 10 years ago, she wasn't a politician. You take a look at how she, she ascended to the second most powerful position. It's scary shit what they are doing. My name is Keith Wilson. I'm a lawyer with the Justice Centre for Constitutional Freedoms. As some of you may know, there was an announcement earlier today that the Justice Centre and a team of lawyers are here on the ground in Ottawa to assist the truckers and the Freedom Convoy 2022 with whatever legal needs they might have. What we're going to do today in this brief press conference is you're going to hear from Tamara Leach, who we all know is the spark that lit this fire and the leader of this organization. You're also going to hear from Joanny Pelche, who is going to summarize in French what Tamara says. And then Danny Bulford, former RCMP officer, who assists the organizers with security and liaison with the police, will speak and update you on some of those things. At the end, there will only be questions to me, and those questions will be related, if you have any, to the situation with GoFundMe, and I can answer those questions. So with that, I should also note that, that with Tamara is uh, Chris Barber, one of the key uh, leaders of the Freedom Convoy 2022. So with that, I'd ask Tamara to come forward and make her statement. Thank you. Thank you. I always have this problem with microphones, sorry. <laughs> 
Uh, thank you very much for being here today. We are here out of love for our families, our communities, and our nation. These past two years, the COVID mandates have divided us. This protest be began because of the federal government's restrictions on trucker freedoms. Um, our movement has grown in Canada and across the world because common people are tired of the mandates and restrictions in their lives that now seem to be doing more harm than good. As of today, Sweden, Denmark, UK, Norway, Finland, Ireland and Switzerland have removed all COVID mandates and restrictions. We are therefore calling on all levels of government in Canada to end all COVID mandates and restrictions. We will continue our protest until we see a clear plan for their elimination. Premier Scott Moe of Saskatchewan has taken leadership in Canada in ending restrictions and mandates in that province. Hopefully, these words will turn into long-lasting action. So far, no one from the federal, federal, provincial or municipal government has spoken directly with us. Instead, they are using you, the media, to portray us as racists, misogynists and even terrorists. As a woman with Métis heritage, a mother and a grandmother, I am offended. The reality is that members of this freedom movement are average, peace-loving and law-abiding citizens from all walks of life who are fed up with being disrespected and bullied by our government. We continue to see additional Canadians coming to Ottawa every day for peaceful demonstrations. We want to we want to thank the hundreds of residents of Ottawa who have stepped forward to show their support, providing accommodations, food and just plain friendship to members of our convoy. This love of community is what Canada is all about. Let me assure the people of Ottawa that we have no intent to stay one day longer than necessary. Our departure will be based on the Prime Minister doing what is right, ending all mandates and restrictions on our freedoms. We also want to thank the thousands of people who have so generously donated to this protest to GoFundMe. Over the last three days, our accountants and lawyers have been working hard to deal with the legal details. This morning, our lawyers sent GoFundMe all the details that they have asked for. I am confident that GoFundMe now has all the information needed to immediately lift the suspension they put on our campaign. I am hoping to hear from GoFundMe soon so that we can get the money to the truckers and keep our protest for freedom moving forward. I will be providing regular updates. I want to thank all Canadians from the bottom of my heart for our quest to restore our freedoms. Thank you. Boy, that person sure sounds uh, scary. Maybe little Trudeau should keep hiding from her and all the truckers. Man, you know, you want to hear somebody talk normal and uh, truthful and to Canadians? You sure the hell aren't going to hear it on CBC or from most politicians' mouth. Justin Trudeau just keeps doubling down while he hides. This virus affects us all. Two of Maybe it ate his brain. Contracted it. And this morning, I learned I, I tested positive for COVID-19. Yeah, but I got no symptoms. I feel well and have no symptoms. As my friend Erwin Kotler said on Saturday, freedom of expression assembly and association are cornerstones of democracy but nazi symbolism lies imagery, lies and lies of war memorial lies are not more lies it is an insult to memory in reference to the truckers convoy hate freedom convoy never be the answer Over he the is destroying days, canada shocked and frankly disgusted by the behavior displayed by some people protesting in our nation's capital. Some people? I want to be very clear. How many? You're not intimidated. You're not clear, you moron. Hurl insults and abuse at small business workers and steal food. 
from the home. Right. A massive COVID revolt in Canada could be heading to America next. Tens of thousands of truckers are currently protesting the country's strict vaccine mandates, and their organizers say they're looking to take on the U.S. government next. Somebody's got to fight you, this great reset, and, and Brian, uh, you, I think teamwork with our northern neighbors and us, we got it. Expect it to grow exponentially over the next uh, several days, uh, next couple of weeks. We're looking at launching California to D.C. beginning uh, March 1st. It's coming together. It's coming together very quickly. Um, well, a lot of public support on the American side. The huge show of force apparently striking a nerve with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. I have attended protests and rallies in the past uh, when I agreed with the goals, when I supported the people uh, expressing their concerns and their issues. Black Lives Matter is an excellent example of that. But I have also chosen to not go anywhere near protests that have expressed hateful rhetoric. All right, Jesse, he's decided that he's not going to go anywhere near protests that to talk about hateful rhetoric. And he says that uh, they are uh, uh, being violent toward their fellow citizens. Isn't he ginning up more hate? Isn't that how you divide, just the way it's happening in this country? He looks like he wet his pants. I have not <laughs> seen any barbarians with tiki torches and pitchforks. These seem like reasonable people that just want to work. And, you know, when, when Canada gets angry, Angry, that's when you got to think, wait a second, maybe we've hit a, a breaking point here. These people, they are our number one trading partner. Yeah. Bigger than Mexico, yeah. bigger than China. If we have a problem with that supply chain where there's ships idling off the coast, imagine we can't get goods and services back and forth the northern border. We're not going to be able to buy anything. And all you need to do as a politician, Judge, and I figured it out, it's really simple. You just have to listen to people. Yep. How hard is that? You listen, you say, uh-huh. You can even fake listen. Yeah. You just go, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then you just do basically what they want. Just kind of or at least in the it. same range as what they want. <laughs> right. You know Talk what, Greg? You're okay. right about that. All right. But you know what, Greg? Didn't he go too far when he called those truckers uh, men in tinfoil hats? Oh, yeah. no, no. He, Canada should be ashamed of this. Oh, God, I almost said douchebag. <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> <You did. laughs> He's a callow leader. This is a guy who backed a fraudulent BLM from his safe little perch, and then he sells out. Well, he did that to, to help alleviate his own blackface scandal. That's yeah. why yep. he did it. Then he sells out his own citizens. He's not a PM. He's a BM. Oh, but anyway, uh, these are not normal activists. What That's why BM you have to stand for again. Movement. Oh, oh, oh okay. God. These are not normal okay. activists. These are not college kids. Right. They're social justice warriors. These, These are hard working. Yeah, on the spectrum of social activism, they're the least <laughs> yeah. likely agents of change, which is why you should take them seriously. And I know that the media and, 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 and uh, the left want to insinuate violence and insurrection-y kind of rhetoric, yeah. and they're hoping for it. And they might get it. There might be a freak who does something wrong, but that's what they really want because mm -hmm. it's weird how everything switched. It's like, you know, the workers of the world unite, and there are no leftists there to oh, applaud that's it. That's a good point. Yeah. Does this idiot even understand what he's saying to Canadians? I have attended rallies when I agreed with their goals. Oh, so if you don't agree with Canadians on something, well, screw you guys. I'm going in hiding. What a little, and he did wet his pants, I'm pretty sure, but stay indoors, Trudeau. In some places, they're being joined by Sikh immigrants from India. Pictures shared on social media show Sikh protesters expressing solidarity with the truckers. I love my freedom and my liberty as much as everybody does. And I hate a government telling me what to do with force. That's all I'm here for. It's about choice. It's not about vaccine. And we are all together. We are all Canadians. We are all truckers. These protesters are no longer just about COVID-19 restrictions. They have turned into a movement against the current leadership. A movement that is finding overwhelming support. Oh dear, overwhelming support? Well, that sure the hell contradicts what little Turdo says. But here's the thing uh, I gotta say for the last in this video is that every Canadian should be damn proud of the truckers standing up for freedom and democracy that connected and seeing how Canadians 
are spreading a movement around the world. From Australia to the United States, many parts of the world, the trucker convoys are gearing up to take back their freedom, their liberty. And uh, some governments, I guess, maybe Denmark and others, are preemptively, we got to lift this friggin' mandate as restrictions before you know, they come here. So change is coming. And thank you to all the truckers in Canada who took part in this and others who couldn't but were forced to get vaccinated. They couldn't take part in this because they have bills to pay. They got all kinds of different reasons. It's not that they're standing in solidarity with the government. Same with the cops or the medical uh, frontline workers. They're not getting standing in line with Justin Trudeau's mandates. They've been forced to do it, make a hard choice. Do I give up my job and do I don't know what? Or do I just put my head down and get the shot and carry on? It is a shame what Trudeau has brought onto Canada and every other friggin' premier. Thank God that Scott Moe of Saskatchewan has woken up. And now, apparently, even Alberta is now talking about lifting all mandates this month. That will put more pressure on idiots like in B.C. and uh, other provinces. So Trudeau really picked the wrong side, and he picked the wrong people to piss off and degrade. That's the way I see it.